Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, my friends, it is, of course, the start of a brand new week, and that means we've got some brand new updates coming to Warzone, Cold War, and Modern Warfare. And this week in specific is going to be absolutely huge. Obviously, we've got the whole Warzone event coming up here in just a few days' time. And on top of that, we also have Season 3 coming as well. So we've got a lot of very big changes coming. We've already previewed some of them in, uh, in some of the videos over the past weekend. Then, of course, we've got all the Season 3 content as well. And today, we actually got a slight preview as to what's coming this week with Season 3 and with the new updates. So you guys already know, today we're breaking all of it down. As always, if you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it. Uh, let's go for 4,000 likes on today's video. Let's see if we can hit that goal. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed, I am always covering everything going on in COD, news, intel, setups, tips, you name it, it's all right here. So feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. Also, I'm super excited to announce that the channel now has a brand new sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot be more excited to officially announce that myself and Gamer Advantage have teamed up. And now that means you can use code IMMORTAL to get a discount at checkout. By far, Gamer Advantage are the go-to when it comes to blue light glasses. Of course, all day, every day, I'm working on content. I'm playing games, I'm editing videos. I am constantly staring at screens. And ultimately, that's not ideal for your eyes. Getting eye strain, getting headaches because of it, it's not a fun situation, right? But after trying out Gamer Advantage, the problems are gone. No more headaches, no more eye strain. I'm feeling good all day long. Not to mention, they look great. They're super comfortable. I cannot be more thrilled with them. And like I said, I'm so excited to announce that I'm now officially partnered with Gamer Advantage. So be sure to use code IMMORTAL at checkout to get yourself a nice little discount. Now, before we dive into all the Season 3 stuff, Warzone actually got a brand new update today, which changed quite a few things ahead of the Season 3 update. I uh, was not expecting this update whatsoever, but uh, it's definitely got some pretty interesting changes, and it's actually like a 6 gig download on PC, and it's like 2.3 gigs, I think, on PlayStation, and right around 5 gigs over on Xbox. Uh, so keep in mind, you may have to download some stuff prior to playing. So, first up, they actually removed the RCXD completely from the buy stations. Now they're only available through, like, the bunker buy stations or the zombies machines. They also fixed an issue where you couldn't actually put on plates sometimes. They fixed the containment protocol missiles landing in the play area. Then they also reduced the volume on their sound effects, which I'm definitely very, very happy about because I believe they're going off pretty much every single match now. And uh, let's be honest, they're pretty loud and pretty obnoxious, so I'm glad the volume has been reduced. They also fixed a bug with the loadout drops, sometimes blocking movement. Uh, in Kingslayer Trios, the gas circle is no longer going to completely move outside of the play area. Pretty surprised that could still happen, actually. Uh, for blueprints, the SWAT Master blueprint now correctly has the whole dismemberment icon. And then we move on into the attachment changes, which I would say is where the really, really big adjustments come into play. Here they fixed a bug with the Modern Warfare Sniper Scope and the Variable Scope, as they weren't actually displaying glints when looking at enemy players. They fixed the bug with the Modern Warfare Weapon Perks, as they didn't actually have the intended effects active. They fixed the bug with the Bullseye Reticle, and then on the Psykov, they increased the hip fire spread with the 140mm Auto Barrel. Uh, with the Kimbo, they reduced the movement speed by 5%. With the 80 round drums, they also reduced the movement speed by 5%, and they reduced the ADS movement speed by 7%. And then when equipping the 140mm auto barrel and the 80 round drums at the same time, the damage is reduced by 25%. Uh, so these actually are some pretty big changes, I would say. This definitely lowers like the overall effectiveness and the efficiency of the Psykov. Of course, we're going to see even more weapon tuning with the actual Season 3 update, but this was definitely a nice surprise to start off the week. In my honest opinion, I do think this sort of forces the meta back to uh, favoring overkill, you could say. You know, for the past week, ever since the Psykov dropped, Pretty much everyone's been running, you know, their standard like EOD or double time, but with either restock or ghost instead of overkill because he didn't really need a second primary just because the Akimbo Psykovs were so good and so powerful. Uh, but with these changes, the Psykov pistols are very slow, especially when you have all the, uh, you know, meta attachments on there. They're still really, really good up close. They do slightly less damage now, so the TTK is slightly lower, but they're still really, really good, you know, for pushing buildings and for playing those extremely CQC fights. But personally, I still think now that the FFAR or like the MAC-10, the Bullfrog, the MP5s, those are probably the better option for an actual secondary just because you have some better range and you definitely have some better mobility. Now, moving into the Season 3 reveal, uh, let's break down the roadmap first and then we'll get into the whole blog which details even more seasonal content. And uh, right away, I gotta say, Season 3 looks pretty good. Season 2, I won't lie, felt a little bit lackluster, but Season 3, at least based off of these previews and these reveals, actually looks really good. Uh, so first up on the roadmap, we've got the multiplayer stuff for Cold War. And here we see some brand new 6v6 maps, including Yamantau, which is a mountain-based map. 
Uh, that one should be really cool. I always love like the snowy or the mountainous maps personally. We also have Diesel, which is a 6v6 and a 2v2 map. So it'll work for standard multiplayer, then also gunfight and face off. Then we have Standoff coming at some point during the season as well, which of course is a brand new remake map. Uh, Standoff was an icon back in Black Ops 2, so that should be a ton of fun to play on. I would honestly expect that one to probably also go into the CDL rotation. SMD on Standoff, Hardpoint on Standoff could be really, really fun to watch. We also have Duga coming to multi-team and Outbreak, which should be pretty cool as well. I don't personally play a ton of that, but uh, the whole Duga area should be pretty fun to play on. Then for the multiplayer modes, we're getting Sticks and Stones and multi-team elimination. I assume that's going to be like multi-team team deathmatch in a sense on the Outbreak maps, but uh, we should find out more about that in just a moment from the blog post. Then we also have the Stray Front score streak coming to Cold War multiplayer as well, and that'll be available for everyone right away. Now, getting into the new Warzone stuff, uh, honestly, we don't really have a ton here, but what we do have, I would say, is pretty exciting. We've got the Warzone map update officially teased and like previewed. This is actually the first ever time officially that Call of Duty have said that the Warzone area is going to be changed, that the Verdansk area is going to be updated. So it's official now. Season 2 is the end of Modern Day Verdansk. Season 3 will bring a brand new map update to the game. Then we're also getting a brand new Warzone event called The Hunt for Adler, which, if I had to guess, may actually be like an add-on or an extension to the intel that we previously had in Warzone in Modern Warfare. Then for zombies, we're getting the Duga Outbreak area, as mentioned, alongside the Toxic Growth Field Upgrade, the Cargo Truck, and the FAV Vehicles, then also some new intel. Uh, kind of surprised we're not getting a brand new map at the launch of Season 3, but I'd expect we could be getting a new map at some point during the season instead. Then for the weapons, we've got a ton coming in Season 3, including the PPSH SMG and the Swiss K31 rifle at launch. Uh, those are going to be like the two main battle pass weapons, presumably. Personally, I'm really stoked about the PPSH. It is also an icon. We've also got the ballistic knife coming at some point during the season, the Carve.2 or the Carve.2, then also the Amp 63 coming in season as well for the ranged weapons. Uh, well, I guess the ballistic knife is kind of like a hybrid there. Uh, then we also have the baseball bat melee coming in season as well. Now, for the operators, we have Wraith, who is like the whole main seasonal operator that shows on the roadmap and whatnot. We've got Captain Price coming to Cold War, which is pretty interesting. Then in season, we have Knight and, uh, and Antonov, too. Then we're also getting more prestige icons and prestige levels. With the Season 3 Reloaded update, we're also getting some kind of new event. Now, looking into the blog post, like I said, we've got even more new information here. We find out that Price is actually the 1984 version of Price. He's going to be free for everyone, which I think is pretty awesome to hear. Uh, anyone who owns Cold War will get him as a playable character in Cold War and then also Warzone. Activision also details that the multi-team elimination mode is basically uh, like multiple teams, obviously, hence the name, uh, fighting over this ever-expanding radiation zone. Then redeploys are going to be limited and there's no custom classes, so you actually have to loot for weapons and equipment and all that stuff. The blog also says this about the upcoming event in Verdansk. The situation in Verdansk is about to hit critical level. It seems the combat zone has become too dangerous for even a tier 1 operator to survive in. Is a conflagration imminent? The answer is still unknown, though it is recommended for you to clear your schedule for the week and be ready for a crescendo of utter chaos in Warzone. Be certain to be available throughout Wednesday the 21st and beyond. And then to close out the blog, they also detail the update sizes. Uh, the Cold War update is going to be taking place on April 20th at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Then the Warzone update is going to be on the 21st at 9 p.m. Pacific time. And for the Cold War patch, on PlayStation, it's going to be 8 to 12 gigs. On Xbox, it'll be 8 to 11 gigs. Then on PC, it'll be 13 gigs. Then for the Warzone update on PlayStation, it's going to be 25 gigs. On Xbox, it's going to be 25 gigs. And on PC, it is also going to be 25 gigs. So yeah, there you have it. With all of that being said, that is effectively everything we now know about Season 3, and also what ended up changing in today's surprise Warzone update as well. That's going to wrap things up for today. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. And, of course, if you're new here and you want to stay up to date with pretty much everything going on in COD, whether it be news, intel, updates, you name it, it's all right here. So feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. As always, if you want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL on all SCUF, G Fuel, Control Freak, and Gamer Advantage products. The links for all those can be found down in the description below. But once again, thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.